Hey everyone, um, let's uh, continue our talks for today. Um, beside me is Christine, uh, she is our first lady presenter of the conference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fun fact, she is a fellow cat lover. <laughs> okay, um, I will not disturb her anymore, so please, um, round of applause for her talk. Thank you. Hello. Uh, so, girl power. <laughs> so, my talk is about Ruby Golf, and I would like to encourage everyone to play Ruby Golf as well. And you can, I'm again, I'm Christine Joy Paas. You can find me on GitHub at KJC Paas. Um, my Twitter handler is the same, but actually, I don't open my Twitter account, so it's useless. Don't bother with it. <laughs> So, I'd like to introduce myself first, and as Natalie said, I'm a cat lover, and at home, it's like I'm playing Neko Atsume every day. So, that's two of my cats. And even in my uh, console, I have this cat emoji. So, yeah, I love cats. So, I am from the Philippines. Anyone else from the Philippines here? Raise your hands. Oh, quite many. So, nice to see you here. And actually, before I went to Singapore, I was in Malaysia for a couple of days. So, they made a mistake in my name in Malaysia. They thought I'm Joey. So, I am not Joey. I am Joy. J-O-Y. Just three letters. Okay? And I work for Quipper, an ed tech company uh, in Manila. And... Just a little plug, we are hiring. So if you are from London, Tokyo, Manila, Jakarta, or Mexico, uh, you can apply in some developer positions. You can visit our website, and we also have a tech blog. I also wrote some articles in there about some problems we've encountered and how we solve them. And you can approach me every time. So going back, let's play Ruby Golf. And though we won't be playing it like this, it's just too expensive, but it's, a, it's the wrong type of golf. So the Ruby golf that we'll be talk, I'll be talking about is, it is a practice when one tries to achieve the shortest possible code that, that solves a certain problem. And in this case, it's using the Ruby language. But this practice is not exclusive to Ruby. Um, you can also see it in Perl, JavaScript, and many other languages. And if you're interested, you, are, you can visit the Anarchy Golf site in golf.shinh.org. So the website looks a bit ancient, but there are more than 900 problems in there. So you can check it out. So for, if, for an overview of golf, let's try the FizzBuzz. And if you're not familiar with FizzBuzz, so if you're given a number N, so you have to iterate from 1 to N. If it's divisible by 3, print Fizz. Divisible by 5, buzz. By both, FizzBuzz. Otherwise, print the number. So if we try to solve it straightforward, uh, so, sorry. We're going to run the program using the Ruby command. And take note that we can get the parameters by using argv. So for the beginners out there, so the output should look like this. So since 1 and 2 are not divisible by 3 or 5, they are printed out. And on 3, instead of printing 3, it prints fizz and so on. So let's try solving the problem. And the straightforward solution would look like this. You have a loop and a series of conditions. So it's very clear, right? So very easy. And it's like you just rewrote the problem statement. But now let's look at the shortest possible code. This is not my code, by the way. I just searched shortest quiz bus. And my reaction was this at first. I didn't not understand anything. Let's look at, take a closer look inside the loop. What the hell is that? <laughs> so there is some string interpolation and some array processing and lots of ors. But if you take a look at it for a very long time, you might be able to understand it. <laughs> well, 
the first kind of code is what a professional code might look like. It's very clear, and if you look at the variables, you understand what it's for. So like that, descriptive naming, clear and understandable, it's maintainable, and it's also easy to debug, because if there's an error in your code, you will just see, oh, there's an error in line seven, error in line nine, so you can just check those lines. Now for the golf code, it's single letter naming, so what is X, what is N? It's, I don't know. So because of that, it's very hard to understand, and it's not maintainable. And it follows that it's also hard to debug, because if you have an error, it says you have an error in line one, but everything is in li line one, so where? <laughs> you have to check everything. So one, th one more thing. If your teammates or your boss see you doing golf code, you might get fired. So why do we need to do Ruby Golf? Well, for it is to know some Ruby secrets or the lesser known uh, features of Ruby. So the first secret I discovered wa were predefined variables. You can go to this site or you can just search. So like in the golf code, uh, it's using dollar asterisk, so it's actually a shorthand for argv. And these are some of the other variables that uh, we have. There are a lot more, so you can just look at the documentation. And another example, uh, this dollar greater than is an alternative for the default output, which is std out. So if you push some string into it, it would print the hello world, for example. Now, the second secret is the question mark. We usually see this symbol when uh, we use methods that return Boolean values, like to that even question mark, or uh, in ternary operator. But another usage of question mark is to define single character string let literals, like question mark A instead of quotation A, and you can even use it in symbols like in the third one, question mark dot is like quotation mark dot. So it saves you one character, so three, two characters instead of two. So in golf code, shorter is better. <laughs> Next is the asterisk. You, we, usual usage is for multiplication and splat operator. And the splat operator usually see in method arguments. So it just transforms the arguments into an array. Another secret usage of asterisk is it's an alternative to join. At first, when I know this, it's like, why are you multiplying array by a string? It doesn't make sense. But, well, as Maybe as I did golf, it started being natural for me. So one character versus four characters, that's a lot. <laughs> Next, and actually this is my favorite, is the square brackets. Usually it's for getting elements of array, hashes, strings, and other enumerables. Another thing, its secret usage is it's an alternative to strings include method. So if you apply a substring, uh, apply square brackets to a substring, it would check if that substring exists in the string. So like in the first example, el exists, exists in hello. That's why it returned el. On the second one, hello doesn't have m, so it returned nil. And as a bonus, it can even re check regular expressions. Like on the third one, it's checking for capital letters, uppercase letters, and it returned the capital H. On the last one, it's checking for white space characters, but there's no white space characters, so it returned nil. Does anyone, did anyone know this? Seems like 
it's the first time for most people to know this. So it's it can be useful even in some other functions. Next, are unary operators. I'd like to focus on two sim unary operators, specifically the negative and the complement. So negative complement of A, it's equivalent to A minus one, and if you just reverse it, it's equivalent to A plus one. So maybe you might ask, what's the benefit of one over the other if they have the same length? Well, that's because unary operators have higher precedence over other operators. So you, we have PEMDAS, but it's like you just added U in front. So it, it uh, gets done before the other operators. Like in the first one, it's like you're multiplying 3 plus 5, which is 15. But if you, tr you use 4 plus 1, 3 times 4 uh, gets multiplied first before adding 1. So it would result to, result to 13, which is wrong. And if you try to replicate the same behavior using 4 plus 1, you'll have to add parentheses. And so we can reduce the number of characters in that case. And there are some other techniques, maybe this is quite common sense. You can use ternary operators instead of the usual if-else. Use single line block syntax instead of do end. And in checking divisibility, you can check if it's less than one instead of checking if it's equal to zero. It saves one character. And similarly, using map instead of each uses less one less character and a map uh, does whatever each does and if it's possible you can use the exact value instead of computed value like 3.1416 instead of math pi other approximations can also be used but it requires some research so i had to look to, to search in google about these approximations. Now, let's try applying what we learned in Caesar cipher. Anyone familiar with Caesar ciphers? Uh, so it's one, it's, I think it's the earliest known substitution cipher in existence. So it's like you're shifting the alphabet by a certain amount and then you just map the letters like here, if it's, it's shifted by three and hello transforms into core, K-H-O-O-R. And to make it simple, we'll just let's just assume that the text is only composed of letters, uppercase or lowercase. And this is what I, this is the solution I came, uh, I, I did for the Caesar, Caesar cipher and I did a character count and it has 248 characters. So my goal is to reduce it by 75% to around 60. Let's see if we can do it. So first thing that we can do is to change variable names into single letters. So, and it becomes a lot less understandable. So what is A, what is B, what is C, etc. But we were able to uh, reduce, uh, to shave off 68 characters just from that. And next we can use some shorthand like dollar star instead of argv and we can use A and B directly. So if you're familiar with algebra, it's like you are substituting the value of A and B. Oh, uh, it becomes like this. Sorry if I'm going too fast. And similarly, we can use D and O directly and we can remove the comments because, you know, they are not needed <laughs> in golf. Golf is ma made to not be understandable. <laughs> and now we reduced it to four lines and 104 characters and it's getting and getting more cryptic. And
And next, we can use the question mark A instead of quotation mark A. But even better, we can use 65 directly instead of A.org because it's what it evaluates to anyway. And now we're down to 94 characters. And we can use this method called bytes in string. I only know about this method when I did golf. So it's like you are mapping each character of the string in, uh, with ORD. Uh, so lot of, lots of steps. But it results into this 70 characters. And lastly, we remove the spaces. They are not needed. Yeah. And that's the final code that we have. And we are down to 64 characters. And we were able to reduce the code by 184 characters, 74.2%. My goal was 75%. Didn't make it, but it's close enough. <laughs> well, actually, it's possible to reduce it farther, but uh, I decided to stop here because maybe it's, it will not be really understandable. And in conclusion, what Ruby Golf made me do was I read more Ruby documentation. Like, uh, I wouldn't have discovered bytes if I didn't uh, read more documentation that I, did, I, don't, that I don't usually visit. And the main goal is to search for methods and variables with short names. Short is better. Uh, it made me think of ways to solve problems unconventionally. So this FizzBus code, even though it's not mine, I just I realized that um, the ingenuity that uh, people can have. So this is something that most people won't think about. Next, it made me a reg expert. <laughs> I, I reference rubular.com a lot less when I did a golf code because uh, if you're doing golf, you get to use regular expressions a lot. And next, it challenged my logic and creativity. So this is code was actually from the last Ruby Kaigi from a contest that they have. So it's like there is a, this is a Sudoku solver and the puzzle is embedded inside the code. So I would like, this is like the next step. So it's like you're making code with art. And I, the first step is, if you know how to shorten your code, then you can manipulate your code to look something like a painting. So I would like to do that someday. And like Matt said, uh, we should always have joy in programming. And uh, Ruby Golf provides new challenges. And yeah, it gives more joy in programming. So let's all play golf. Thank you. And do you have any questions? Uh, we have time for one question. Anyone? Hello. <laughs> which one? Was, which was your favorite golf trick? Um. Yeah, my favorite was the is the square brackets, especially because it can even process regular expressions. So it's very it can kill two birds with one stone. Um, thank you, Jai. <laughs>